All right, got a seventh generation Accord here. This vehicle has an intermittent, very intermittent, no crank, no start issue. Now it turns out it's the transmission range switch. Um, I don't have time to go through the whole starting system and show you how to diagnose these things. But um, basically what I will tell you is this vehicle was towed to a dealership, a Honda dealer, and then to an independent shop twice. So three times this vehicle was left stranded and had to be towed. And uh, in each case, you know, when they got it to the, to the shop, they couldn't find a problem. And so they gave it back to the owner. And so the owner was, you know, goes back and drives it. And next thing you know, they're left stranded. So if this happens to you, if you go to crank your vehicle and it doesn't do anything, no clicks, no anything, it just, the key turns and that's it. Here's a simple test. Don't do anything else. Don't touch anything else. Just take it and go from park down to neutral and then try to start it again. And then if it starts, it's most likely your transmission range switch. That's a good test and that's a good way to get you out of a bind if you're, uh, if you're left stranded there. And if your vehicle is cranking but doesn't start, that's a different issue. That's totally different. Now, we're going to make sure that emergency brake is fully on, and it is. And we're going to chalk the rear wheel so it doesn't go anywhere. Both of them. And from the front of the vehicle, we're going to go right under here. And you can see where this hole is right here. We're going to put the jack right there and jack the front of this vehicle up. And once we get the front of the vehicle jacked up, we're going to come down here. And you can see this bracket right here. There's one over here and there's one on the other side. We're going to put jack stands on both sides. Okay, now from in the vehicle, we'll turn the key on, press the brake, put it down into neutral, and then we're going to leave it. We're going to turn the key off. Now we can't get the key out because it's it's not in park, but that's okay, as long as everything's powered down. Um, if you want, you can pop this little cover off, put the key in there, and then you can move this switch or move the gears without having to mess with the key. As long as the door is closed, it won't beep. Okay, using a 19 millimeter socket and impact, I'm going to knock these uh, lug nuts off. Uh, if you don't have an impact, you'll need to do this when the, this vehicle or the wheels are still touching the ground. All right, from right here, that's our uh, the cover to our transmission range switch. It's underneath there, so we got to pull that bolt off and. The one back over here by the tip of my finger. We gotta knock those loose. And that's a compliance bushing. And that's what they look like when they're completely torn through. This thing definitely needs to be replaced. Alright, now these don't look too bad, but yours might be crusty where you live. So we should be able to get a quarter inch in there. And that'll come out. And then the other one. Do the same thing, yeah. Now those will both spin out. I'll just spin those out. That's what they look like. And then this is what the one back there looks like. So as you can see, they're not the same length. So don't get them confused. Long one goes over here with the washer. All right, now that we got the bolts off, we'll just reach up under here, snake this, snake it off. There we go. And as you can see, there's our range switch right there. All right, now we just need to disconnect this connector right here, and we got to pull this bolt off and this one. And if you noticed, you see, see these marks right here? They're actually little grooves. And they go all the way up. You can see there's a groove at the top right here, and then right here, and then in the actual switch itself, and then down here. And they all line up. 
but they only line up in the neutral position. That's why we had to put it in neutral. Now let's see if I can disconnect this thing one-handed without getting in the camera's way. Okay, here we go. So that's disconnected. Get that up out of the way. Now we'll just get those two bolts. Now those two bolts are also 10 millimeter, but because they've been on there a while and they might be kind of crusty, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch ratchet. Just like this. That way I have a little more leverage to pop those loose. we got to be careful. We don't want to break them. Not bad, and we can just spin them out. Both the same length. All right, we should be able to just reach up here and gently pull this straight out. We want to be careful. We don't want to move that around or break it. Okay, here's our brand new part from Honda. There's a the part number made in Japan. Um, oh, this is a V6 model that I'm working on. Always double check the part numbers for your application. And of course we want to double check to make sure our parts are the same and they are. And you can see the new one all the slots are lined up just like our old one for the neutral position. That's where it needs to be. Alright, using a feeler gauge we can just see we can see everything is lined up perfectly right there. We want to make sure our new one is the same way. So we just line it up in all the grooves. If I can get it on there. You can see it's all lined up perfectly. Now we can put it on the vehicle. All right, we want to take our new one and gently, without moving anything or trying not to, we'll pop this back on. See, it just pops over the shaft, and then we want to make sure everything is still lined up. You can see we're perfectly lined up right there. So we'll go ahead and tack it down right there. All right, one final check. Make sure everything's lined up, it is. We also want to make sure, you can see the groove in there. We want to make sure that groove is completely lined up. Now it will, as long as we push this all the way in. We want to make sure our sensor is all the way flat on the back. We don't want to be drawing it in with the bolts. We look good to go, we can tack this down now. all we got to do. Snug them up. Now if you're into torquing these small fasteners, it's 8.7 foot pounds. You can go ahead and do that if you want. I just do them by feel till I get them good and snug. Uh, 
we don't want to kill these. We're, we're going into plastic and we don't want to strip them out or do any more damage because that'll, that'll be a bad day for you. You strip these out. All right, now we'll put our connector back on. You want to make sure that snaps in place and will not come off. And we'll get our cover back up into place. Come on. There we go. And remember our long bolt goes over here. And the shorter one goes up in here. Start them by hand. You don't want to cross thread anything. These are also 8.7 foot pounds if you really want to torque them. Just use my quarter inch and we'll snug these up. All right, good to go. Put our wheel back on. We'll torque those down to 80 in a second. And we'll get the vehicle lowered back down and get these stands out. And we'll get our wheel trucks. And we'll torque these down to 80 foot-pounds. Can you see that? All right, let's verify if this thing will work. You can see we're, it shows we're in neutral. That's good. We'll put it back in park. Press the brake. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Three, two, one. And back. Looks good. Let's put it in reverse. Make sure we got reverse lights. And we do. And we'll put it back in the park. We'll see if this thing starts. All right. Starts in park. Now, let's put it in neutral. This is exactly what you what you would do if you had a no start and you suspected a transmission range switch. Put it in neutral and then let's see if it starts. And we're good to go. Went into reverse. Went into drive. And it moved. All right. I'm in the garage so I can't drive it very far. All right, looks like we got a confirmed fix. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little video on replacing the transmission range switch on this Honda Accord. And the little tip um, on putting it in neutral to see if you can verify the problem if you do have a no start and we do suspect it's a transmission range switch. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.